Well, it's time for the Sooners to bounce back. That's the optimism you have to have if you are a fan of the Crimson and Cream. Won't be easy, though, because this Saturday you're going against a team that really specializes in the run. Well, then that sound familiar. Doesn't that look familiar after uh, last week's disappointment in Dallas against Texas? It will be Oklahoma against Kansas State from the Little Apple. That's Manhattan, Kansas. And the game, by the way, good news. At least it's not an 11 a.m. kickoff. Well, I got sick and tired of that. Uh, OU and Kansas State, 2.30, ABC or ESPN2. Pretty simple. Um, if you uh, cannot get the game on ABC, more than likely you're not in a Big 12 market. No problem. Just flip it to ESPN2. Um, I'm sure the game will also be um, on ESPN360.com. So that way uh, you'll have access to watching OU and Kansas State live. Sooners, by the way, four and a half point favorites despite last week's uh, disappointment at the Cotton Bowl against Texas. Four and a half point favorites to win against Bill Snyder. And by the way, um, if you are a believer in trends, recent trends, you'll love this news if you're a Sooner fan, which we'll talk about in a little bit as far as a couple of trends that are big time in the favor of Oklahoma. So for the Sooners entering this week, how's the situation look injury-wise? Devontae Bond's still up in the air. Don't know if he's going to play. Uh, remember, he had the uh, ankle injury against West Virginia. And the reason why I thought there was a good shot he was going to play against Texas was because that injury against West Virginia, Bond said he could have come back and played. But the coaches said no. Apparently, the, um, there was more severity to that ankle than we imagined and maybe more than what the coaches thought. So that's why you didn't see him play against Texas, and that's why you saw Lindley play in this place instead. Um, as far as Jordan Thomas, if you watched the Texas game, you saw in the second quarter, he took a pretty hard shot behind the ball, almost a cheap shot, if you will, by Texas wide receiver Amante Foreman, who, by the way, was a former Sooner commit. Um, no doubt the, uh, the, the hit had an impact on Thomas' shoulder, put him in a lot of pain, but right now, thanks to treatment, he says he's fine. He should be ready to go against Kansas State. But again, the situation um, defensively for Devontae Bond, who they really need out there, uh, that part re remains a question mark. Probably be a game time decision for him. If you're looking at the Sooners historically, this is the trends I'm talking about, two that really favor Oklahoma. Number one, this is really hard to believe, but it's the gospel truth. Bob Soups has never lost in Manhattan. 5-0 and oh at the Little Apple. And the other trend, you know, I don't think Bob Stoops has ever lost the week after Texas. No matter how he's done in the, uh, you know, in, in the Cotton Bowl against Texas, which I think he's 10-7 and seven lifetime, pretty good record, win or lose, he always seems to win the week after the Texas game. That right there is another big check mark there. But it won't mean anything if the Sooners, again, can't block and again, if the Sooners poor, you know, have, have poor tackles and have breakdowns, and if they fall behind early and allow Kansas State to melt that play clock down, that's what they'll do. And K-State entering this game has to feel like, man, should be 5-0, and should be ranked in the top 25, should be 2-0 and in the Big 12. Well, what it could have, should have, right? They can't handle a 15-point lead at Oklahoma State. And you got to give credit to K-State in that game, too, on the road facing quarterback depth issues, and they had to go down to Cody Cook. And Cook was a listed wide receiver. They put him at quarterback, and he not only did well, but again, K-State had a 28-13 lead. In the second half, though, offensively, didn't do much, and they end up losing the game on a, on a field goal in the final few seconds, lost the game by two. And then last week's loss against the number two team in the country in TCU was really one that made you scratch your head if you're a Wildcat fan. Yeah, you were a big underdog in that game, but first half offensively couldn't do any better. The zone read was giving TCU fits. K-State was up 35-17. Third quarter, K-State has the ball. Now, this is what really surprised me, too. They came out throwing the ball, ended up costing them. They threw an interception. TCU ran it back for a touchdown. Changed the complexion of the game. At that point, the Sooners, uh, you know, the Sooners, of course, know how um, how it feels uh, when you lose games that maybe you felt like you should have won. K-State maybe was getting that feeling that, you know, as TCU kept chopping away at the lead, that you're thinking, uh-oh, here we go again. It's Oklahoma State all over again. And when the game was tied, final few minutes, Trevon Boykin breaks that Big, big run for a touchdown. TCU wins by seven. But to me, that interception that TCU got early in the third quarter that trimmed the lead down to 11, that was the true changing point of the game. It gave TCU that confidence that they needed. 
and the game changed after that. I think K-State only had one touchdown in that second half. So K-State's had the capability to do it, and you're going to see a lot of zone read. The Wildcats, of course, with Joe Huberter uh, back at quarterback, didn't even start um, a game at quarterback prior to this year in college and never had started a game at quarterback in high school, but a terrific athlete, you know, has a strong arm, a consistent arm. I'm not sure about that. I mean, he only completed 13 out of 33 passes last week against the Horned Frogs, but he is a terrific athlete, very fast in the open field. He's quick, runs his own read extremely well. The guy that worries me the most, if I'm a Sooner fan, is Charles Jones, the K-State uh, running back. He could break a big one off at any time and nearly took one to the house late in the uh, Oklahoma State game in the fourth quarter when K-State hit that bad field position and trailed for just a brief period of time. Jones's big run helped K-State get the lead in the final few minutes. They retook it, just couldn't hold on in the end. But you will see plenty of zone reading. This is what I'm stressing, okay, if you're a Sooner fan. Oh, you false behind 14 to nothing in this game. They're not coming back. Because K-State, it would have proved that they probably are running the ball effectively, and it's proved that they probably are going to get takeaways. And like I said, when K-State gets the ball and has a lead, they will watch that play clock. It'll get down to one second or two, and then they'll snap the ball. Bill Snyder teams are fundamentally sound. They know how to operate the clock. They usually don't beat themselves. Now, last week was a rare exception, but don't count on that happening again. The Sooners have got to jump all over K-State early, make an immediate impact in this game, make it completely different than Texas as far as that first quarter, and Oklahoma should be just fine. And they'll have to do it with effective running, okay? You can't run for 67 yards in a game like you did against Texas, get out game by almost 250 yards on the ground like you did against the Longhorns, and expect to beat Kansas State, especially on the road. I know the trend favors Oklahoma when playing at K-State, but it will mean nothing if you cannot win that line of scrimmage, if you can't win that battle. It will just do nothing at all but create shades of last Saturday. You've got to be able to have P. Ryan and Mixon you know, take control of this game. That's where the offensive line must man up and block better than what we saw. If they could do that, and of course stay away from those ugly turnovers and make it a field position type game, I think the Sooners will get back on the winning track. And that's where I'm going to go. I'm going to say the Sooners win this one, okay? You know, Bob Stoops is being doubted again as far as how good of a coach he is, which is hard to believe. You know, you can't win them all. I mean, Barry Switzer, you know, he was under pressure back in 1983. Some people wanted him gone after that. And he ended up having, you know, some of his best years in college football after that 83 season. So terrific coaches don't win all the time, but they do come through you know, when there's adversity. And right now, for people doubting Stoops, Stoops, I think, answers back Saturday. And I think the Sooners get a road win and get back on the winning track. I have OU winning. I'm going to say they win by a score of 31-20. to 20. We'll go 31-20, Oklahoma to beat Kansas State and to get off to a better start than what we saw um, against the Longhorns. That's my look at Oklahoma, Kansas State. I will have my college football picks coming up Friday. And I will have the post game of Oklahoma, Kansas State, Saturday evening. Please check back. Boomer Sooner.